I'm Steve Potter for STL TV, and we're here at the Moonrise Hotel talking with actress Margaret O'Brien and with Ben Mankiewicz from Turner Classic Movies. Hi to both of you. Welcome to town. Hi, it's Steve. wonderful to be back in St. Louis. Well, we're so glad to have you here. Of course, the reason you're here is that Meet Me in St. Louis was just one of your early films. How old were you, eight or ten? I was um, six. Six years old. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, Meet Me in St. Louis is celebrating 75 years. Oh, I can't believe it. We don't say, we don't say it's that. You don't look that old. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> ben, tell I me. I was little. I was little. Yeah, about this big. Um, ben, tell me why you are here. You had a contest that St. Louis played a role in, and that's why you're here. Yeah, so for the last uh, three years, we've uh, sort of had a contest uh, to bring TCM to your town, your hometown. And, uh, you know, towns and cities around the country su uh, submit why they, we should come to their hometown, and St. Louis's argument was. Uh, persuasive, and this lady does not need a lot of convincing to help. Well, if it wasn't for TCM and Turner Classic Movies, uh, I don't know what would have happened to Meet Me in St. Louis and all these wonderful movies. Because right. when we first made the movie, you know, MGM just made it for a theater and then it was put on the shelf. Right. What was it like? I mean, your first movie, how old were you, four? I was um, three and a half. <laughs> well, actually, the very first movie, I was like, two and a half, three, and that was Babes on Broadway. How did you get into that? I know both your parents were entertainers in their, in their own right, and you, were, you, were, you grew up in San Diego, so you're close to L.A. Was, mm -hmm. was you just being in proximity? Did that help you get well, into the business? my mother was from Spain, Spanish, and she was a very famous flamenco dancer with the Casinos, mm -hmm. Rita Hayworth's family, her father and mother, and my mother danced for them, and my aunt was a famous dancer with Xavier Cougat show at the Waldorf. So my mother was really planning on my aunt's career as a dancer, and they were having some pictures taken for the marquee of the theater at a very famous photographer's named Paul Hesse, uh, which was on Sunset Strip. And she didn't have a babysitter for my dog or for me, so she brought us along, and when they walked in, the photographer said, that's the face I'm looking for. What a face. I'm doing the cover of Saturday Evening Post, and I want that face. Well, my mother thought it was her, but it was the dog. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, it's the dog. Can I use the dog in the picture? And then he said, well, the baby's not too bad. She's kind of cute. Can I use the baby in the picture, too? So that made the cover, and then I did a lot of covers, my dog and I, for Paul Hesse. And the studio saw one of those covers and called me out for the little part in Babes on Broadway, and then Journey for Margaret. Yeah, Babes was your first movie. So I would never have been in if it wasn't for my doll. I'm gonna jump in with a, a question here, because it just, uh, so what was your name before Journey for Margaret? My name before was Angela Maxine, but I love the part in Margaret so much that I made my mother change it legally to Margaret, right after the movie. So from then on, I was Margaret. I was O'Brien, but I was not. What do you think sets Meet Me in St. Louis apart from all the great classic movies? The reason TCM has succeeded is in large part because nostalgia is not just a marketing device. It means something to us. It connects us to our past. Um, and Meet Me in St. Louis does that because it's a beautiful story. I mean, it's not even much of a story. That's the, <laughs> I'd give you an idea of how powerful, I mean, the story, I mean, the pitch meeting is, uh, a well-to-do family is happy, uh, dad wants to move out of town, family doesn't, so they don't. But uh, it's this sort of great script, it's this, it, it, that, and then these performances suggest that you cannot believe that you are not seeing a, an actual loving family. So it connected with people then in 1944, it was a huge hit. So many families tell me, oh, I saw TCM and my children were with us and they were watching right. Mimi in St. Louis and my baby and my little girl and my little boy. And I think it, they want to have that family again. I want to mention Judy Garland. And you were a young girl, of course, at the time. What kind of relationship did you develop with her if you did? And did you ever see her after that? Or did you get to know her as a person or what? Yes, well, we'd see each other at different functions. And you know, a lot of times when you worked with somebody and you didn't see them anymore or you'd see them in a function, right. they were kind of too busy to say hello 
or they kind of walk through. They're too busy wanting to get to the table. But she never was. She would always come over and say, oh, Margaret, how are you? How is everything going? She was a very sweet person. She, she, looked, really she, was. she looked out for you on the set because she'd had she such a difficult experience as a yes, young, yes. young actor, and she was worried mm -hmm. for, for Margaret. Is, that's, is that a she fair? Was. Yeah. And also, this was a happy time for her. I saw her doing a happy time because she met no, Mr. Minnelli. Yeah, she fell in love. Of, and um, she was never late. She was right on the set. And he, he did things right. He would start at 9 o'clock and we'd end at 6. He didn't work her to 10 o'clock at night. See, Vincent I was Minnelli very lucky Vincent when Minnelli. I came in because I had the school teachers mm -hmm. then. And they, we could only work till 6 o'clock. So he did the same for Judy. And, and she worked better. She was happy she wasn't tired and she said I, this was the happiest movie and I thought I looked the prettiest. I've got one final question for you. Back in 1994 the Library of Congress um, deemed Meet Me in St. Louis as culturally significant. Do you have a comment about that? I think so because it's historic. It's, it's the history of that era, that time and Vincent Minnelli was a historian of, the, uh, of that time, the Victorian times. He knew all the antiques. He would know the doorknobs if they were right at the set. So I think it's um, really a historical piece of how families were at the turn of the century. Mm -hmm. Well, Margaret O'Brien, Ben Mankiewicz, thank you so much for being here. And uh, I'm so glad I could say to you both, welcome to St. Louis. So well, thank you. <laughs> it's been fun talking to you. Here. I'm Steve Potter, and for STL TV, we're at the Moonrise Hotel. Thanks for watching. Clang, clang, clang with the trolley. Ding, ding, ding with the bell. Ding, ding, ding with my heartstrings as we started for Huntington's Day.